This here is my Otis Autotronic panel, which is fully operational and fully working. To this day, this has been my most complex project. In this series of three videos, I'm going to show you how I fixed this panel up and turned it into a fully working simulator. So this is an Otis Autotronic panel, and this came from a fully working elevator system that recently got modernized. I actually saw this panel while it was still in service in the building that it came from. And as you can probably tell, this thing is not small. It is gigantic and very, very heavy. It was definitely a challenge to get all of this into my little car. So the panel here features some key switches to control the modes of each car. There's also a main mode control in the middle. And you can see there a little clock, an analog clock that is. Here in the middle section, we have the communication system. I'm not really so sure how all this worked, but it's definitely here. And then the top section has all the lights for the status of all the cars. So let's take a closer look inside of this panel. But first off, we have these keys and these are what lock the doors closed. You can see here, this one is drilled out. Luckily, the other two are still intact and I removed them because at the time of this, I did not have the key, but this is what one of the locks look like. All the key does is turn the little latch and it opens. So opening up the bottom section, grants us a look into the inner workings of this part. And you'll see down here, we have all of the key switches along with the four lamps, the big mode select, and the clock up on top. Just like other Otis key switches, there is a little plastic ring around each of the keys that have the label on them. Each of the lamps have a little cover around them, and this is what one of the bulbs look like. These are all 120 volt bulbs. Here's the mode select key, and it has this springy metal separator on it. And then up here, there is a filter of different colors so that each different mode has a different color. And we'll take a closer look at this entire piece later on in the video. And up on the top is the clock. And this is actually going to be the first priority of this project because right now the clock does not run. That motor on the side is seized up and doesn't do anything when powered on. The clock still works, but without a motor, this thing's pretty much useless. So we'll take a closer look at this when I pull it off to fix it. In the middle section, there is this communication system, this little like PA system. I've never really seen these used or really understand how they work, but there's a lot of different buttons on the bottom. There's a volume knob and a push to talk button. And then up here, there is this little toggle switch that was added on, and it has this interesting text. When this switch is in the up position, the hall buttons are inoperative on the 10th and 11th floors up only. That's kind of interesting. I'm not sure what that was for. And finally, there's the top section. And whoa, look at all of those bulbs. <laughs> there are a lot of light bulbs in this panel. And because I don't have LEDs of this type, I'm gonna have to manually put them in on every single one. Oh goodness, no, no. Well, luckily we don't have to do that until the next video. So let's go ahead and close this thing up and get started with the bottom half of the panel. So before I get started, I'm gonna do just a quick wipe down of the panel. Obviously this is not gonna be the final wipe down as it'll get dirty throughout the process, but this is just to get off some of the thicker dirt, just so I don't have to do it later. And with that, it's time to begin extracting the components to work on. So we're only working on this lower section today. I'm mainly focused on the clock, the mode select key, and getting the four lights on the bottom to work. So now that the clock is removed, I can begin working on it. This is how it looks outside. You'll see it's mounted to the metal bracket and it's very easy to remove. This clock is actually quite simple in the way it works. The seconds counter is always moving. And after every minute, it just turns the one dial by one number. And the same idea is for each of the dials. Once it reaches its high value, it turns the next one. So as I said before, the current motor is broken and doesn't work. So I went to an electronics store and I found this. And this is an old timer and it's very simple how it works, but turning it to the back reveals a clock motor. And surprisingly, it has the same specifications as the one that is on the current clock. However, there's a small problem. And that is the gear that's on the end of the old motor is a little bit different than the one that's on the new motor. And the motors have a different size shaft. Now, thankfully, I can pull these gears off and modify the original gear just a little bit so that it'll fit on the new motor. And once that's done, it's just a matter of putting the motor back onto the clock and powering it up and see if it works. And would you look at that? There it goes, it's running. Now that the clock is running, you can see a better close up of how this thing actually works. And you'll see how the little notches pull each of the different dials. And now all that's left to do is put it back on the mounting bracket and put it back into the panel. 
The next step is to work on the mode select key and indicator lights. And of course this whole module is mounted into the panel. So I just have to take that out. And then we can get a better look at how this thing works. And if you look really closely, you'll notice there is a metal arm that turns around and completes the circuit on the different positions. So it's actually quite a simple system. So this portion is going to be powered by 120 volts. So I will be using the original lamps in this and the wiring is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm going to make it where each key position turns on the corresponding light. This portion is not going to interface with my microcontroller system. This is going to be its own thing. And once it's done, you can see here that all of the different lights turn on when I turn the key to the respective position. So while I was working on this, I also pulled out the four lamps that are at the bottom of the panel. These aren't going to be hooked up to any key switches. They're simply just going to stay on all the time and just look really cool. This is pretty simple to wire as well. It's just going to connect all the bulbs in parallel to each other. So they all just light up when they're powered. So all that's left for this portion is to put everything back into the panel and then hook it up to a common source so I can power it with 120 volts. This whole panel will be powered by a single 120 volt plug. I also decided that I want the clock to be on a toggle switch so that I can choose if I want it on or off. So I'm using the original toggle switch that was kind of slapped into the panel for this and everything else was just hook it all up to 120 and see if it works. So this completes the 120 volt portion of this project. So pretty much this lower panel is all 120 volt circuit. Starting off with these lights down here, these are always going to be on. The four still has the little cover in there. The others have fallen out, unfortunately. Oh well, it is what it is. The key switches do not do anything. This key switch does, though, the mode change. And then of course we have the clock. As for the mode change, we can turn the key and it will light up the different modes. And I think that looks really cool. And as for the clock, we have to open up the panel and hit our clock switch. And now the clock is running. So this switch up here controls the clock. So that's going to be it for this first project video on this Otis Autotronic panel. Definitely think there is a good start and a lot of potential for this thing. On the next video, we're going to be starting wiring this beast there is a lot of stuff to consider for this. I have to wire up this entire panel and also design a controller system so that we can control the numbers. So we will see you in the next project video.